Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi guys and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report for Cinco de Mayo. I know we haven't seen each other in a while and I apologize for that. Been busy behind the scenes keeping all these balls in the air of course, not just my own. And uh, so I'm uh, back. It is spring. It is very strange here in North Texas as far as the weather goes. Um, what else is new? It's the new normal. This is what we have, so this is what we deal with. Um, beautiful days like this are squashed by high winds in North Texas. I'm above Dallas, Fort Worth, so I'm near the Oklahoma line. 30 miles away from Oklahoma, way at the end of the earth here. But uh, like I said, beautiful days, uh, like today, could have been out on the water, except that the wind is so high and variable that it's impossible, even in the coves, to hide out and get away from it. Um, you know at the Texas Fly Fishing Report that I do that it's about the entire state and I do the best I can to glean information from across the state and bring that to you. At the very end of this report, I had great uh, compliments on running the uh, TPWD list of, of uh, reports they have. So it'll be scrolling at the end. You can speed it up or slow it down and, of course, pause it when you get to the uh, report you want to see most. I can tell you in general that we've had concentrated and even widespread ra rain events all across the state. And what those do is those create, and I, I had a wonderful email from someone today named Tanner asking about um, water levels and rivers, uh, reading the gauges, and all he saw was numbers. And I understand what he's talking about. Uh, if you're an insider, you talk in terms of numbers. However, there's a general way of doing things that, uh, and a general rules that apply to uh, gauging water for the, the novice like myself. Uh, for example, um, of course, check your flows from the dams. Then also, dams, USACE, Army Corps of Engineers is where you'll usually end up, whether you get referred there by TPWD or some other way. And then municipal water districts, depending on which ones they are, also have the river gauges. And that's the next set of numbers that you'll want to take in. But as I was telling him via email um, today, an extensive long email, um, the thing is, is it's hard to really know unless you go when you have rain events like we have that are concentrated like they are here in Texas in the spring. So what will happen is rain will fall really concentrated in one area and that bulge of water will move down the river. Where it fell, that water is already gone. It may be a little bit muddy and off color, stained, but otherwise it's already on the move and it may not have been somewhere where a gauge was and there may not be another gauge between where that bulge started and where it goes. So you got to keep all these things and typically there are a lot of gauges, but um, there's never enough. So what will happen is that area where the rain fell and they had that brief flash flood, that's fishable. But this bulge is moving down and picking up a lot of silt and sand and everything else along, and debris along the way and that causes problems for all of us fishing down the way. Um, and it can last a week or it can last a day. It just depends. It, that's why you have to be careful too because this time of year in the rivers and creeks it could happen 30, 50, 60, 100 miles away and that bulge comes at you without ever a cloud in the sky and it's coming from way up river. So be very careful if you're fishing the lakes, I mean not lakes, fishing the, uh, the rivers, major rivers and, and uh, contributing uh, drainages uh, that go into these rivers because it is, uh, it can be very deadly. Uh, so in summation what I told him was that as he finds this water body uh, that, that basically he calls his, uh, a river, you find a marking spot on the bank. For me, I'll just be specific, I, I look oh, five times a week probably at, at the dam below Ray Roberts, which is the continuation of the Trinity River. When I look down there, from up uh, half a mile away up on the, 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 the dam passing over on Highway 455, I look down there and I can see a, a, a uh, 
fence that goes down in the water on one side where nobody goes. Well, it doesn't go in the water if the flow is, is low or even turned off to just the, the uh, required flow that they have uh, to keep the thing from drying up. So I know that's not a fishing time, but when that water starts to come up and it hits that that uh, fence that's in the water, or hits the, the water hits the fence, that's fishable. And then the water starts to go up over the fence like this, and that's that's pretty fishable. I'm, but what I do now is when I see it hit the fence, I check the gauge uh, or the release amount, and, and not the gauge, but the release amount uh, for Ray Roberts Dam. And now I know when it hits there, it's 1,000 something CFS. And when it's up, up this far, I know it's 1,800 CFS. When it's up to the banks, I know it's like five, 6,000 CFS. So that's how you, you find your, your own personal reference and gauge for the water that that you're you're fishing on a regular basis that and it could be a rock or a, a boulder that's hanging in the water or a tree that's it's laying over the water or something like that but find yourself a bridge find yourself a reference point and then that way and then look up the flow and then that way you will know by just by looking what the flow is and he was also wanting to know what the good flow was well that depends on the river itself some you know, will have a, a low number for a good a good fishing outcome. Some need really high numbers for a good fishing outcome because of because of the river itself and its unique flow uh, characteristics. So that's enough said about springtime flooding, flows, rivers, and uh, below dams. I think it's very uh, <clears throat> very important because what happens is. When the wind is squishing us like it is right now, you can hide out and get out of the wind down in these in these rivers and in these dam uh, release areas below dams and stuff like that, and the wind won't kill you. So that's what's going on with that. As I look out across the state, what I'm seeing is is it's spring. You know, the fish of the fish are up and on. The carp are here in North Texas. Uh, I'm sure they're on everywhere that, that you can find them. They're there now. Uh, we didn't have any kind of winter to speak of. The mosquitoes are going to be very bad up here this year. And for the translation of that, I would say always take mosquito spray with you because we have already measured, I think, some West Nile virus here in Denton, Texas, so in the mosquito sampling, and that's, which is kind of unbelievable. But uh, the coast is on fire as usual. I never had a winter there, so they never really suffered. And so I have to get something to drink, man. This is uh, this is just too much on my throat. I've already done three other podcasts and uh, and video casts, and I just uh, got a long way to go with this one. Um, and this is not one of my sponsors. And we'll talk more about sponsors too while we're here. Um, so anyway, we uh, uh, know that this, the coast from end to end is on fire for speckled trout. And in the last, since my last broadcast to you guys, the redfish have come on as well. I'm not seeing a whole lot of this, uh, this, uh, you know, big, big bull trout thing going on. Uh, I mean, bull reds or anything like that going on. I do see gator trout. <laughs> you get mixed up with all these different nicknames, but yes, gator trout, plenty of those, 27 to 30s. I even heard about 34 being caught the other day. Itch. <clears throat> And, ah, oh, that's refreshing. And that's end to end coast, all along Texas coast. Of course, now with the rain events, that'll dump a lot of fresh water into small areas where these rivers drain out into the, into the bay or into the gulf right there. So you gotta be aware of the, the actual fresh water, salt water mix. And that can have a, a big effect. And I'm sure we're gonna get some rains this I mean, it's just, I can just feel it. We're gonna get some real rains this year for spring. It'll take us all the way through. The lakes will be fine, but the rivers are gonna, are gonna take, take a little bit of a beating, I think, and definitely deliver that beating to the coast. But it clears out, it's the Gulf of Mexico, so it, or the bay, so it clears out really quickly. So look for good action on the Texas Gulf Coast all the way through. You don't have to go. I don't even need to be specific. This is a fantastic year here and a fantastic year there on the Texas Gulf Coast. Got a couple other things I want to kind of show you. Um, 
I've been uh, kind of crossing over and starting a crossover and doing reviews of, of equipment now, specifically uh, camera gear because I have 30 years as, as a professional photographer now. And so uh, I'll be writing a review and, and shooting some video with this Key Mission 360. This is a Nikon camera that came out a while back and I haven't seen anybody hardly get onto it. And I'm going to find out why and if it's any good. And I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And that camera came to me along with some accessories, a whole bunch of accessories actually, from Competitive Camera in Dallas, Texas, Competitive Cameras. And I've been buying from those guys since I started 30 plus years ago, and they're really helpful. Competitive Cameras is a place to go if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, in my opinion, for, uh, for equipment. And what I'm going to do is I'm trying to uh, add knowledge to their uh, website by being a, a blogger, or if you want to call me an ambassador. Oh, what a great name, this ambassador thing. An ambassador for uh, outdoor videography for competitive cameras and the cameras they sell. So this is my first review for these guys. I've, already, I've just unboxed the camera and uh, we're going to put it on the charger. We're going to run it through next week and see what it can do in all kinds of situations. And so that's my new alliance and allegiance with Competitive Cameras Dallas and reviewing uh, video, outdoor video cameras and the like. Also, since we're headed into the uh, <clears throat> summer months, a lot of you guys head for Colorado. Some of you get there during the monsoons. Well, there's nothing better than a good book to read while you're waiting for the monsoons to pass in the afternoons. I've got two books for you to think about. This is called The Art of Angling, Poems About Fishing. And this was a symbol to, from poems over many, many years by a writer that I've come to know personally. And uh, it's edited by Henry Hughes, a very nice gentleman up in uh, Oregon, and he sent me a copy of this, and I like the size of it. I've already started reading the, reading the poetry, which I, I, poetry, fly fishing, they go together hand, hand in glove. I mean, they really go together well, and of course, this is a very historical document as well, as far as uh, the, yeah, some of these are very old poems. Mr. Henry Hughes also sent me another book. He was kind enough to send me two books that he's done. This, is, this other one is, is his own. Um, no, I take that back. This is another compilation. And it has, uh, I haven't I cracked these. I've been so busy. But it's excerpts from books. And we've got people from, from way back to, uh, to current time. And I haven't even cracked this thing yet. But it's called Fishing Stories. Should be a very good book. And I love the size of these books. I think they're called, uh, yeah, Every Man's Pocket Classics. And the publishers are, you got to get these. You just have to have them. I wish I'd read them already, but I haven't. Knopf. So both of these are Knopf. K N O P F. Two books for you Takati Beer. Key Mission 360 Nikon. What more do you want? Well, let's see what more I have. As I was saying earlier, I do have more. Kind of realigning my uh, allegiances when it comes to sponsors. I'm looking around and trying to find uh, manufacturers of clothing that, uh, that make quality clothing that don't cost $100 for a shirt. Um, looking for recommendations on that. I, uh, I just think that uh, things are getting a little bit out of hand when I can't afford them, even with the pro deal or any kind of a deal whatsoever, really. They're so expensive. Um, the margins on, on retail clothing are huge. I, I don't even want to talk about how huge they are. Um, so we're going to look for somebody that's making maybe more than one somebody. And we're going to bring to the forefront some sponsors I've had that, uh, that need a little, more, a little more respect, like Mountain Khakis and uh, bring those guys to the forefront and uh, just kind of shake things up a little bit. Kind of give everybody else their, their fair share of time on the uh, videos and on the, uh, the reports and things like that. So that's the report 
there's a lot going on. Make sure you check out the uh, the drone video that we shot a few weeks ago of the skiff on Ray Roberts. Make sure that you contact me as soon as possible to book your dates if you want to go fly fishing for carp off a technical polling skiff in North Texas of all places. Right here, North Texas. Make sure you contact me. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend, Cinco de Mayo. And I'll be talking to you much sooner than in the past now that things are rolling so fast. Over and out. We'll see you guys later.